Good evening everyone and welcome to episode 122 of Midwestern Geek and Cali. Video casting from Temecula, California, summer's lovely winter home. Yeah, it's nice and sunny and warm here and all palm trees and all that, so got to enjoy that. So a little bit of practice here. I'm always trying to fine tune this thing a little bit. We'll see how uh, we're doing here. Recording on Ubuntu 22.04 with OBS, which has just recently started working again. So this show we're gonna cover some Wisconsin food traditions, some uh, handwritten journal work I'm doing. A little bit about warp drives. How to get into settings in Ubuntu. And that'll pretty much be a wrap. So, for starters, I'm going to have to get us some infinity screen here. I love saying that, infinity screen. It's like the coolest thing ever. All right, so let's hit it with the infinity screen. Here we are. Okay. And on that note, I'm going to have to uh, bring up Chrome. And... We'll go for this profile first. I'll put links to most of this stuff that I'm gonna be working with in the show notes on the Midwestern Geek and Cali blog, which you can get to by going to www.midwesterngeekandcali.com. So let's get off the email here because we don't really need that. And I want to talk about some Wisconsin food traditions. Because I am from the land of cheese, as some of the people who know me are well aware of, Scott Patton. <laughs> um, so let's go to. Spellbook. All right. This is actually a blog that covers a lot of my poetry. I've been writing for many, many, many years poetry since the early 2000s. And we'll get to that in a minute. But um, we're going to talk about fish fries. Friday night fish. It's a big tradition in Wisconsin has been for a long time so um, So I'm going to Google search a brief history, history of the Friday of the Wisconsin fish fry. All right. Um, this is on Travel Wisconsin. And it's really cool, interesting little background history of why fish fries are a big deal in Wisconsin. And I mean all over the state. It's a big thing, um, fish fries, if you're from Wisconsin. Now... I'll leave, it to, I'll leave it to you to um, 
go after this article on off the blog i'll put a link link there because i'm a huge believer that you should visit the websites and actually read the articles for yourself i'll point them out to you and give you the links but i'm not gonna go through the entire article here um, just know that it exists and the history is a little bit interesting and it's worth taking a look at now one of the other things i know everybody thinks brats and beer yes that's like a religion if you're from wisconsin of course brats and beer but not on friday nights friday nights is all about the fish fry now we're going to google one other little thing that kind of makes it puts it all together all right Okay, the Wisconsin Old Fashioned. This is a classic drink. Okay, um, they've got recipes all over the place. I actually had one earlier, much earlier this evening. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful drink. If you're not familiar with it, I prefer mine with bourbon. Um, that's just a little something I really, really enjoy. And it is a classic in Wisconsin as much as the fish fry as cheese and, you know, beer, brats, and all that. Uh, Wisconsin is known for having old fashions. Uh, people from Wisconsin, that's kind of a big thing. So we'll get back over here to the spell book. Um, so this is an old-fashioned here and of course the fish fry with lemon now I actually prefer my fish fries with uh, lemon and malt vinegar uh, tartar sauce is another big one uh, a lot of people either do lemon or tartar sauce uh, malt vinegar any of the above now we happen to find uh, a really good um, fish and chips out here in Temecula. This is at Killarney's. Okay, Killarney's Irish Pub. And let's see if I can get on their menu here. And where are we? Fish and chips, come on. I know you're here because I just had some on Friday. They kind of got it buried here. Fish and chips. There it is. You can get one piece, two piece, three piece. Um, they really give you a good picture of it there. So let me pop over into Facebook. I wouldn't usually open Facebook on uh, one of these, but I'm just going to go briefly because I'm pretty sure I threw a picture of fish and chips over here in this group there we go all right that's uh killarney's fish and chips the malt vinegar i picked up at the local grocery store and uh they do a beautiful job oh it's so good um they're just perfectly battered white fish um the fries are lightly battered too um they're really really good um, usually it comes with lemon, malt vinegar, and tartar sauce, so you have all three options. It's like a Wisconsin fish fry in a box. Friday night fish right there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of this um, Facebook here, and we'll go back. Um, just FYI, this picture here that I used to illustrate um, my poem, Flying for Fish, 
was done with Google's Gemini AI. Um, I used to use Dell E2 from ChatGPT for our AI image generation. I tend to like it uh, doing uh, AI images with a watercolor effect because I'm not trying to reproduce reality. I'm just trying to illustrate a point usually if I'm using an AI image. I don't often have the time to draw these things myself, although I'm a really good drawer, and I could, but it would take me too long for the purpose of what I'm using it for here. And I like the way it turned out, so I went for it. So I will uh, read the little poem here. It's not long, but flying for fish. It's Friday night. For a boy from Cheeseland, no time for beer and brats. That's Saturday afternoon, don't you know? Bring me all that crispy gold, like my mom's days of old, on a plate with tartar and lemon, and make no bones about it. It's Friday night, and I'm flying for fish. And there you go. Friday night fish fry, and we now have one here in Temecula. Thank goodness. Uh, my wife and I have made it a Friday tradition. We were doing pizza at Rosati's on Friday nights, but we've moved that to Sundays now, and we are flying for fish on Fridays. There you go. And so another project that I've been doing is blogging um, memories. And typically, I would uh, I write by hand in cursive in a journal, trying to keep a little something old school alive. Um, this is one example. You can find this on my spell book, which is actually an odd spelling of grimwire.blogspot.com. Um, I'll link it for you. I also have another blog called Pen Pals on Paper. It's all about old school pen pals back in the man, 70s, 80s, and earlier. I don't know if that program still exists, but it used to be, you know, you make friends with somebody from another country by writing letters back and forth through the actual snail mail, um, as they used to call it, or U.S. Postal Service. And, you know, you can actually mail letters to other countries. I actually had a friend when I was in grade school, um, uh, actually high school, uh, we were uh, friends in, in grade school, 7th grade, 8th uh, eighth grade, and then my friend moved out of country. His father was from another country. His mother was from the U.S. Um, you know, he was born in the same town I was, um, my friend was, but um, his father was from a different country in South America. And his dad was an engineer. He worked with my dad. And uh, when they moved back down to the country his father was from, we kept in touch by writing letters via airmail back in the day. And uh, we wrote letters back and forth, usually about on the order of once a month. And there was no internet then. It didn't exist yet. Um, no one had a personal computer at home. Pers computers were for work. You know, they were only existed at work, and they were not anywhere near the size of computers today. Um, nor were they as capable or powerful. They didn't. They didn't hardly connect to each other. It, it was a completely different era, and everything was done on paper. So typically, in that era, if your friend moved away. You just lost your friend, you know, because everybody says, yeah, we'll write, you know. Most people did not. Um, this friend and I did. We uh, kept writing back and forth. We stayed in touch, let each other know what was going on in each other's lives and stuff. And then uh, a couple of years later, when he moved back to the U.S., um, you know, we stayed friends and we're still friends to this day. So that's kind of cool. Um, we've been friends since, I want to say, 1975. Um, so I'm journaling. This is to kind of keep me in the practice of writing because writing on paper is such a different thing than keyboarding. 
it's a different skill and I love to do this like right before I go off to bed um, typically what I'll do is I'll write what was going on during the day on the top half and then I go back into old memories um, from when I was a kid and I call that the memory of the day and I really reach back in time some uh, memories that I like to bring back are ones from when I was two some from when I was in grade school eventually I'll be doing ones from when I was in high school and it, it, it gets pretty interesting I've got some interesting stories from back in the day we moved around a lot when I was a kid I've lived in several different parts of the country you know all in the US and uh, I was my mom was adopted by an Italian couple so there there were some interesting things that went with that quite a few different things so and I've got a really really good memory so I've got some pretty deep stories there that are a lot of fun um, this one's all about my Sicilian grandmother and her cooking and this one in particular and she was a phenomenal cook I mean absolutely amazing um, even the old Italians in town would fight for a place at her table she was that good I mean it, everybody absolutely loved her cooking and I got to spend a lot of time with her when I was a really little kid in the kitchen you know while my mom was working and I still know how to make the pasta sauce it takes a long time though to do it right you've actually got to put that sauce on the stove early in the morning and let it simmer super low temperature all day long and uh, you know and make a little adjustments to it all through the day it takes a long time but what comes out of that pan at dinner time is something you haven't lived you haven't had Italian food until you've had that I'm just saying but uh, I'll let you read it for yourself if you're interested in that this will be linked over on the site all right now I want to get into a little bit of stuff about warp drives and for that I'm going to flip back over to Facebook because it's the easiest place for me to find it we'll get off the uh, Friday night fish there and I'm going to switch over to a different group I have a group called Midwestern Geek and Cali over on um, Facebook um, you're welcome to join uh, if you want, I post an awful lot of science articles, tech tips, um, things like that over on uh, the Facebook group. Um, you know, all kinds of kind of geeky interests and whatnot. Because, uh, you know, if it's kind of geeky, it's kind of my thing, you know. And that's what I like to do. There's episode 121 is linked there. Now, we have some interesting stories. Um, it's a little bit bad. <laughs> um, here, I might have to scroll back away. Um, oh, there's a comment coming up. You might want to find that in the Facebook group. Um, uh, Patrick is uh, it actually um, was a fellow teacher with me over at uh, a school we both used to work at. I was IT. He was uh, office, like Microsoft Office. Um, but there is a story over here and I'm still looking for it regarding warp drives that was really interesting and I want to get back to that and bring it up so scrolling 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 of course I was talking about the fish in here and quite a few other things too and it must have been a little ways back I do tend to post a few stories every day in here a little humor a little this a little that yeah. this one let's pop this in a new tab over here bring it up this is on Ars Technica new warp drive concept does twist space they are uh, are talking about a version of the Alcubierre warp drive theory that um, can be made to function without any exotic materials or negative energy. 
um, and they're, they're not quite up to par for being able to do it, but this also doesn't get us faster than the speed of light. Might get us close to the speed of light, which would be a huge improvement over where we are at now, but um, I'm going to link this article for you over on the Midwestern Geek and Cali blog again. That is MidwesternGeekandCali.com. Let me uh, pull up a fresh tab and I'll take you there. There we go. There's the blog. And uh, when I get this episode posted to YouTube and linked on the blog, I will uh, link all this stuff in the notes on the blog post uh, so that you can find it easy. So just go to MidwesternGeekandCali.com and I'll drop you that'll forward right into the blogger site. And you'll be able to find it there. So... Um, one of the other things that I wanted to do, um, since I'm kind of big on converting older PCs to Ubuntu right now, Ubuntu Linux, um, uh, let's close that out. And uh, I want to do like little things about how to use Linux because this is what Linux looks like. Now, when you deep, when you come up by default um, um, the taskbar that you're used to seeing if you're a Windows 10 user across the bottom or Windows 11 in the bottom center by default on Ubuntu when you first install this over here on the left hand side I don't know that's their thing and they have their own um, background image this is another stock image that they have that I like for right now I'm gonna come up with another desktop wallpaper for this machine um, I haven't had Linux on it for very long just for a couple of days um, so I haven't gotten quite all the customizations done to it yet that I want to but uh, I found this a little bit nicer than the stock well, desktop wallpaper that comes with Ubuntu um, in Ubuntu they call this area the favorites and, and you'll notice down here that there is no search box all right in Windows you're used to using a search box to find programs and files and and whatnot and here um, the file manager is usually linked right on favorites I had to add Chrome it doesn't come with it but it does come with Firefox and Thunderbird for email all right and it also comes with LibreOffice installed that has the full office suite LibreOffice is very similar to open office if you've ever used that it's actually a, a branch off of open office but i think it's more polished and a little bit nicer than open office they're both good don't get me wrong um but i just tend to like LibreOffice, and it's what comes with ubuntu so it's, you don't have to do anything it just comes with it so if you want to find a program in Ubuntu, you've got to go up here to the upper left corner where it says activities and then type in the program that you want to find. So I'll type in LibreOffice for example, and it comes with the, the overall LibreOffice, um, LibreOffice Math, which I haven't used. Calc is very much like um, Excel. Um, I haven't really used draw uh, LibreOffice impress is a lot like PowerPoint and LibreOffice writer of course is like word all right they're very similar so if you want to find a program that's installed and you don't have it pinned to favorites down here then you can um, just go to activities and then search and if I want to add one to favorites all I've got to do is right click on it and click add to favorites and then boom it pops in right down there I can drag it wherever I want in the favorites list I'm gonna leave it there next to uh, writer LibreOffice writer LibreOffice calc all right so now I can do documents or spreadsheets right from there and it's really this is 
so much like Windows in some ways. Um, in Windows, this this is um, showing your open applications, I believe. I don't use this much, but it shows like all, all, actually all the applications that are installed on here, I guess. Um, I haven't installed a whole lot of stuff, but you can click there and just get, you know, see a list of everything. And then if I want to get in settings, you're used to seeing the time and date clock and the hidden icons and all that right down here in this corner in Windows. Well, in Ubuntu, the time and date is right up here at the top center and all your settings and whatnot are up here in this corner. So all you gotta do is click up here and then go to settings. Now I have sound, uh, volume for the mic, volume for the headset, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. About battery state, uh, what power plan I'm using. If I want to lock the computer, or if I want to shut it down, or or sign out, or any of that. Um, you can also lock the computer the same way you do in Windows by pushing the Windows key and the L key at the same time. That will lock the computer screen as well. You'll have to put in your password to get back in. All right. And if you want to get into the settings, just click here for settings. And there you go. So in appearance, all right, I'm able to change the coloring and all that type of stuff. Change the size of things. Auto hide the dock. That's what they call this. Instead of calling it the taskbar, they call it the dock. It's a little bit like Windows. And then icon size, I can, uh, you know, adjust things here. I tend to like them a little bit on the smaller side because it takes up less screen display. And then the dock's position on the screen, right? So I can um, put it at the left. That's the typical Ubuntu default. Um, or I can put it on the right or I can put it on the bottom, which being somebody who's used Windows for many years, I'm so used to it being on the bottom, I just prefer to have it down there because it's a little more comfortable for me. Um, I can get into my Wi-Fi settings, I can get into the network settings for like Ethernet, I can get into Bluetooth, I can change my desktop background. Um, this is the default Ubuntu, Ubuntu background that you get with Ubuntu when it's first installed. I just picked this one because I like it, but you know, you can also, if you want to add a picture of your own, you can add it by the, using the button up here. So it's, it's really easy to customize. Um, you know, and it's, it's really simple. There's going to be a few occasions where you're going to, you know, maybe things are work a little bit differently slightly or you might have to occasionally bring up a terminal and write run in a command but there's plenty of support online for how to do stuff in ubuntu by command line um if you do a little bit of google searching your odds are you're going to find some pretty good references on that stuff and you really don't need to do that much in the command line especially not after the initial setup once you get this thing set up and rocking and rolling if you're just going to use a machine for basic office work for surfing the web and doing email ubuntu it's free to use the desktop software it's kept up to date really well Can canonical um, makes ubuntu for desktop and ubuntu for servers they make most of their money on maintenance for large corporate accounts and they give it to the rest of us for free you know so it's really nice um now i can i could check for updates on this thing right now it doesn't force you to update like windows does you can update at time of your choosing when you want uh, when you want to run the updates like when you're actually done working on stuff uh, so Ubuntu is a really easy move if you're coming from Windows. It's not hard at all. Um, so that being said, I'm going to kind of get off the, off the air here shortly. So um, I'm going to 
pop back over into the infinity screen and let's just go to the uh, webcam here for a minute and I'm gonna say well thank you for watching number one um, number two happy Vulcan fingers to you from the agent of 42 live long and prosper peace and long life all that may there never be a rogue wave in your coffee mug and uh, it's been nice to be able to do a couple of episodes this weekend and actually get um, OBS back into some semblance of the shape that I had it in on Windows working on Ubuntu because this has been a year and a half since I've been able to use OBS on Ubuntu so whoever fixed that thank you um, and on that note I'm going to ask if you would please like and subscribe to the channel um, I haven't really made a point of doing that in the past to ask that but I'm going to going forward um, you know, because obviously subscribing and uh, clicking on like on the episode it actually gives me some feedback that uh, you guys don't hate this <laughs> Imagine that. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching this geek from the land of cheese. <laughs>